Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, medical doctor. Welcome to another video. What chance does the country have when the organizations that are supposed to be protecting the health and well-being of citizens across the country are frequently working against the citizens? We are in an absolutely awful place right now. The list of organizations, physician societies that are compromised is too long for me to recite in a video. Whether we're talking about the American Heart Association, which has a very shady history, by the way, this is all well known, I can talk about this another time, or we're talking about the American Academy of Pediatrics, the list is simply too long. But few organizations could be worse than the American Diabetes Association, which is an atrocious organization. And I'm glad that this is finally getting more traction in the mainstream media because the American Diabetes Association, ADA, is fantastic for diabetes in that they are overseeing exploding rates of diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes, but they're not so good for the American people. And I'm going to share this very recent publication with you from The Guardian. And I'm not a fan of The Guardian by any stretch of the imagination, but I suppose even an odious publication is capable of producing something good once in a while. Take a look at this. So this was just published. Kamala Harris should launch a national campaign to end the US diabetes epidemic. It would save thousands of lives, actually probably millions of lives, and billions of dollars and increase Harris's appeal to voters in conservative states. So it is taking a political angle here if Vice President Harris wins the election in November. So this is written by a person who is living with type 2 diabetes and very frustrated with diabetes care in the United States. Our life expectancy is only 48th in the world, and one of the reasons is diabetes. And it does also look at things through the lens of color here because minority communities are actually more likely to get type 2 diabetes because those communities are being flooded even more than other communities with cheap, addictive, ultra-processed foods. So what is the author advocating for? And I would like to think that this should happen no matter who wins the election. Number one, first she should announce her intention to appoint a diabetes czar, whose job, among other things, would be to solve this puzzle. Over the past quarter century, America's pharmaceutical and medical technology industry have made extraordinary strides developing various forms of insulin and other drugs continuous glucose monitors, and test strips. So why have seven times more Americans been diagnosed with diabetes than in 1980? Eventually, common sense solutions would emerge, such as restricting cereal companies' ability to market their sugary treats to children. Well, that's a good point right there. The diabetes industry is currently having a bonanza, like the cancer industry. I hear venture capital are really getting into chemotherapy infusion clinics, and I'm sure they're getting into diabetes as well, because it's all about money for them. But why not do something more common sense, like address root cause issues? Not only would the czar be empowered to confront things like the scandalous $1 billion plus in sugar subsidies, provided by US taxpayers, they would also explore common sense treatments for treating diabetes that are diet and lifestyle focused. That's music to my ears, so what comes next? Number two, we must defund, disqualify, and otherwise delegitimize the American Diabetes Association, ADA. As the author has written, the ADA has become a virtual branch of Big Pharma and Big Food. Well, yes, they have. They are a disgusting organization. Yet it sets standards of care for clinicians and de-emphasizes mountains of evidence that the low-carbohydrate diet is a powerful tool in reversing the disease. Frankly, it is mind-boggling that the world's most powerful diabetes-fighting organization, revenue in 2023, $145 million, has so utterly failed to stem the disease, but still sets these standards of care, controls research dollars, and dictates the diabetes narratives in this country. Well, yes, it does, because they are all about making money, and they're making lots of money. And listen to this here. Late last year, the ADA was sued by its former director of nutrition, she claimed she was fired for refusing to include the artificial sweetness Splendor, whose parent company donated $1 million to the ADA. Well, yes, that sounds about right. How things work in the organizations, the societies, which are supposed to be about helping people with their health. They're actually all about taking donations and doing whatever their corporate sponsors want them to do. Number three, perhaps most urgently, the federal government, including the National Institutes of Health, should expand its research budget to include researchers treating patients with low carbohydrate and ketogenic diets. Absolutely, this is common sense. And this is why a hundred years ago, if you got type two diabetes, which was very rare, 
your doctor would be very blunt with you and tell you what you must do to reverse this. They wouldn't pile drugs on you and most people back then had a better shot of reversing their type 2 diabetes because they kind of had to do that. Number four, we should give platforms to people who actually have diabetes, especially those who have reversed their condition by taking control of their diet. Of all the misconceptions I uncovered in my reporting on diabetes, the most common was that the low carb diet was too difficult for patients, particularly low income patients to maintain. Well yes, absolutely, this is nowhere near as difficult as most people are led to believe and I don't know many people out there who want to get sick, who want to feel terrible. I know because I work with so many people myself, this is what I do. I coach a lot of people on reversing their insulin resistance, their pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes and the needle can start to move in only a few weeks and it's not as difficult as most people think and most people feel like they are a new person within only a few weeks once they start solving this problem in their lives and they are saved from the fate of getting into the clutches of the medical industrial complex. And the article does talk about an example here of a person who had diabetes and narrowly escaped amputation of her right foot after her doctor prescribed a low carbohydrate diet. So I do hope that this is the start and these are the initial optimistic rays of a movement to address the root causes of our type 2 diabetes explosion. Millions and millions of people out there currently have pre-diabetes, undiagnosed type 2 diabetes and it is in their best interest to be given the best possible advice and that is not going to come from organizations like the terrible American Diabetes Association and if any of you want to know how bad the organization is, I encourage you to go to their website and sign up for their newsletter and see what happens next because they will bombard you with emails wanting to get money off you. They are all about collecting as much money as possible. That's how they have become a very rich organization indeed. Whether or not they are classed as non-profit, the money is flowing into them and I'm sure that the people at the top have very good salaries. Organizations like the ADA, as far as I'm concerned, are money-making scams. They do not have the true health and well-being of the American people at heart. If they did, they would just occasionally put out a tweet put out a message encouraging everybody to adopt a healthier lifestyle. People listen to organizations like the ADA. They won't do that, but they will send out thousands of tweets and emails about collecting money and also what medications and injections you need to be on. And they will also frequently give you very shady dietary advice, whatever pleases their big food sponsors. What an atrocious organization and I completely agree with what was written in that article. Defund and delegitimize the American Diabetes Association. Start with them first and then we'll work our way down the list of other organizations that are making America very sick indeed and are totally compromised. Thanks everyone for watching. Feel free to comment down below. I enjoy reading all of your comments. Check out my website and my health programs including my holistic fat loss and insulin resistance reversal program. Those links are down below. Hit the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button for more similar videos in the future. We will speak again very soon.